Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to experiment doing time-lapse photography using a Raspberry Pi. So if you want to make movies that look like this, or perhaps like this, then keep watching and I'll show you how I created them using our favourite single board computer. Right, here we've got a 4GB Raspberry Pi 4 connected to a Raspberry Pi high quality camera, which we're going to use to shoot our first time lapse. And if you want to know more about the different Raspberry Pi cameras, just look back to my recent video, Raspberry Pi Camera Group Test. Anyway, if we nip on over to the Raspberry Pi OS desktop, here we are, you can see that in Raspberry Pi configuration, I've got the camera interface enabled. That has to be the case if we want to use the camera, that's obviously quite important. And at the end of my table here, I've got a little scene set up with a glass in which we're going to be melting some ice to make the time lapse you just saw in the introduction. Although at the moment, Mr. Scissors there's no panel there as focusing aids. And I've got everything nicely sidelit for dramatic effect. Back here on the desktop, if we open up a terminal, we can execute the command here, raspi still minus t20,000, like that. And this will bring up a preview of the camera for 20 seconds or 20,000 milliseconds. Bring in my hand. Oh, it's exciting, isn't it? All the excitement going on there with the side lighting. And uh, I think 20 seconds was a bit long for a preview, so we've seen it by now. But of course, for focusing and things, you need to have time to uh, check out the preview. And to shoot our final movie, I've written a piece of Python code here in Genie. And what this does is to first of all import libraries for both the camera and time. And then it sets up two variables. One is interval, which is number of seconds between every frame taken in our final time-lapse movie, currently set to one. And then frame, which is the number of the first frame in our time-lapse movie, which will increment as we take more frames. And then we set up the camera. We initially set it up there, setting up camera is pi camera. We set the resolution to be the maximum resolution here of the high quality camera. If we don't do that, the pile shoot 1920 by 1080 frames, which is fine, but shooting full resolution gives us more flexibility in post-production. And then we open up a preview and also a time.sleep two seconds, just let the camera settle down. And then finally, the exciting bit is this while true loop. While true is always true, so this loop will go on forever. And basically we capture a frame to a folder I've called frames there in our videos directory. And it's going to be called ice, and then the percentage 04d there, dot jpg, and then frame on the end, means it'll use the file name ice, initially 0000, and then ice 0001, 02, etc., to record a sequence of frames. As you can see, here's the bit where our frame variable gets incremented every time we go through this loop. And finally here, we've got time.sleep interval, which will pause for the interval value we've defined up here. So just to show you this works, let's just run this code like that and it'll come up and give us uh, the preview and then start taking frames. There'll be no evidence of that. I'll bring my hand in just to again show you. Hello, I'm waving to you. That's exciting, isn't it? But anyway, that will go on forever, but we can interrupt it with control C on the keyboard, which is not an ideal way to stop this program, but it'll work. And if we now look into our folder here, if we look into videos, and into frames, that's where we recorded things. Oh look, we recorded six images. We just open one up, it'll come up down here. Let's uh, full screen that. And also if we press Shift G to go 100%, we can drag it around. You can see this is pretty well focused. Everything's nicely set up. Always worth making sure for a time-lapse things are nicely in focus and everything's set up correctly. And what we'll be doing finally here is taking a crop from the middle of this frame, I think, rather than the the whole lot will be taking an image roughly that size, I think, from this final frame. Anyway, that's all there, so we'll close this lot down and go back to our code, where I'm going to set the interval to be 15 seconds, and we'll save that. And this means that the Pi will capture 240 frames an hour, which at the 25 frames a second frame rate I work with here in the UK will be 9.6 seconds of video recorded for each hour that passes in the real world, which is a 375 times speed increase. If you're working at 30 frames a second, shooting one frame every 15 seconds will deliver eight seconds of video per hour of recording, representing a 450 times speed increase or if you wanted to obtain the 375 times speed factor I'll be recording here in this video, 
you would need to set the interval here to 12.5 rather than 15 seconds. Getting the frame interval right is critical for taking good time-lapse movies, and given that I think the ice will take somewhere between about half an hour and an hour to fully melt, one frame every 15 seconds to me feels about right. But we shall see. Anyway, I'm now going to load the glass with ice, and so you can take a look at that. I will uh, bring up the preview like that. There we are, we'll get rid of Mr. Scissors and the pen, drop in our ice cubes. Well, they're not cubes, are they? They're uh, ice circular things, but uh, hopefully these will just go in here like this. Great chinking noises. There we are. And uh, with that all set up, I'm just going to, I think, tweak my uh, exposure down a little bit. That looks a bit better, doesn't it? Let's just do a preview again to check it's going to look OK. I think that is about right, maybe slightly less. Always under rather than overexposed. That looks good to me. And with that set up, we get over here, get rid of the, uh, the preview. There we are. We can now uh, start off recording this time lapse video. Greetings! Here I am back again, and the glass of ice has finally melted into a glass of water, which, to my great surprise, took about 2 hours and 35 minutes. Which means here in the frames folder on the Pi, we've recorded 621 frames. So what we now need to do is to turn these into a movie, and the reason I'm working here on a 4GB Raspberry Pi 4 is that it can run the Caden Live video editor. So let's just run up Caden Live from Sound and Video over there. And I've used Caden Live on the Raspberry Pi many times on this channel, not least in my Raspberry Pi 4 week video, where I actually edited the whole video on a Raspberry Pi 4 here in Caden Live. Anyway, Caden Live has run up, and if we look under Project here, you'll see that the project settings down there have defaulted to my defaults, which are a 1080p movie at 25 frames a second. Obviously, you could change that if you wish to, but that's what I'm going to work in here. And so we'll bring in our frames. Let's go over here to uh, Add Clip, like that. And we just need to go to the Frames folder, pick up the first frame, click on Import Image Sequence, and it'll bring in our sequence of images. And if we drag it down to the timeline over here, like that, there we are, just push it to the end, and we'll give ourselves a bit more space on the screen here like that, and probably just zoom in a bit as well to make it look a bit neater. And we can see the clip here on the screen. What we can't see very easily, though, is that this is a 3-4 image, which is sitting at a 16-9 field, and therefore we need to zoom in a bit to get rid of the edges. And so to help us do that, I'm initially just going to add an effect, which is going to be under color correction, and it's going to be brightness keyframable, because it's a much better brightness control than non-keyframable. And all I'm going to do, you'll see what I'm doing in a second. If I do that, we can now see the edges of a clip quite easily, because they're clearly a different color. So I'm now going to add into this under Effect and Crop and Transform. We're going to add in Position and Zoom, like that. And I think Zoom about 140%. Remember, we've got a 4K frame here, so we've got masses and masses of resolution to play with. We can now drag that into roughly the right place on the screen. The Pi is objecting a little bit because there's an awful lot of data here, just over two gigabytes of data for this shot, which is a lot to be handling in Caden Live on the Raspberry Pi. And now we've done that, we'll put our brightness down to something a bit more reasonable. Maybe let's give it a slight boost, 110. That's looking more like it, I think. And I think just to be wild, I'll also add a little bit of contrast adjustment. So we're going into effects and color and contrast, which for some bizarre reason here has a strange way. It's default is 250 rather than 100. We'll make it about, say, 280. Add a slight boost to the image. And I think that's OK. So we'll now go to Render, like that. We'll pick MP4, and we'll save it into videos, not documents. Pi, I think we'll definitely want it in videos. Seems more logical than documents. Let's pick up videos, and we'll call it, I don't know, Ice Time Lapse, like that, and save. And now we're ready to render out the video which will take the Pi a little bit of time. It's got a lot of data to crunch, so we'll transition forward in time. And there we are, it's finished. So let's just come out of Caden Live and we'll save the file in the process. And there we are, we can now just go back to videos and hopefully we have got our ice time-lapse over here. And so we'll play the file. 
very exciting. And there it is. I love the way the ice rotates as it goes round. It really is amazing. And there's a slight discontinuity as it come up because obviously things just suddenly fall over and things when, when like that when the when the the ice is melting. This is, but I find that's that's fascinating to watch. But because we recorded a lot of frames, it's a bit slower than I anticipated. But I've also taken the files onto a PC and done another render of it. I'll just plug in a USB drive. I can show you that. Hopefully it'll pick it up. There we are. And this is running at twice the speed. And I've also added a zoom out because we've got loads of resolution to play with. And I've even put in a few sound effects. So let's finish off this segment by playing this final version of the ICE time lapse. Back in my recent Raspberry Pi plant watering video, I made this time-lapse movie of growing cress. And in this video, I intended to try and shoot a better version. And in fact, I even started growing some cress. We've got it here. And the idea was to see this cress growing in a time-lapse video in this video. And in particular, I wanted to get over the issue of what happens at night when you're doing a very long time lapse. And I was going to use these super bright LEDs and have these controlled by the Pi turned on at night so we didn't have a problem of black frames for about a third of the time lapse. But I realized that I came to put this together. Actually, things are much more complicated than this. Even just having these lights turned on at night wouldn't stop us having mixes of light and having problems with exposure levels. And I think the only way to shoot a really good crest growing time lapse, and I really like to do that at some point, is to either have the crest growing under LED grow lamps controlled by the Pi to have complete control over illumination, or to have the crest growing maybe in a box which has got a window on the top which lets in sunlight, and for every frame to be exposed we'd have a little servo on the Pi which would close a little shutter on the window so the box would be completely dark inside, then you turn on the LEDs, shoot the frame under artificial light, open up the little window at the top again to let sunlight in to let the thing grow, etc. And I'm nowhere near having all of this set up at the moment, so we're not doing this in this video. And so right now we're going to move on and shoot some clouds in a time lapse using the Raspberry Pi Zero from my Raspberry Pi plant watering video. And here, as you can probably see, I've got it connected to a zero cam camera, a very good value small camera for the Raspberry Pi. And I've got this set up so that it will auto boot. It's going to run from this Belkin uh, power bank so it can be completely independent. We can take it outside. It'll auto boot, run some code, which will take a frame every two seconds. And it's set up so it'll do that for 750 frames, and then the Pi will shut itself down. And this process will take about 25 minutes, and it'll produce a 30-second movie when played back at 25 frames a second. So, if we connect up a monitor, mouse, and keyboard, boot things up, and go across to the Pi Zero desktop, here we are. You can see the code I've got on the Pi here in Thony, which is pretty similar to what we had before. First of all, we're importing libraries, including here the OS library, so we can execute a shutdown command on the end. And then we set up our variables, exactly the same as before. Interval here is two seconds. We've then got a wait command, a time sleep for 20 seconds. And this is here because the Pi is auto-booting this code, but we might want to stop it. So that gives us 20 seconds to stop the code if we want to do that. And then down here, we've got the setup for the camera, where here the resolution is set to that for the zero cam, which is lower than the resolution on the HQ camera we were using previously. And then we've now got a while loop, not while true, but while frame is less than 750. So this will shoot 750 frames. And it's saving the frames with the name cloud and the number on the end. And then finally, after this loop is finished, our 750 frames have been captured, we're going to execute a shutdown now to close down the Pi. I point out that this piece of code has been made executable by going to a terminal and entering a chmod plus x and the file name. And that's also been done to this file here, boot up sh, which is a small bash script, which is used to execute our Python code when the Pi first boots up. And that's made possible by having made an entry in the auto start file on the Pi, which lives in home pi.config lx session lxde pi, and auto start is in there. 
and you can see this is the entry I've added to run our bash script when the Pi boots up. And this auto start process is something I've talked about previously because I've used it in several previous videos. Anyway, with everything there all set up, we could now grab the Pi and put it on a tripod outside pointed randomly at the sky. Here we are. And if we wait our 25 minutes, by the magic of filmmaking, we will end up with this time-lapse movie of some clouds. And the zero cam impresses me here. It's a pretty good result. Its auto exposure has kept things pretty consistent. There's a bit of flicker, not too much. We even got some sunshine there, look, and some blue sky. The first and apparently last we're going to get all week. And if you're wondering about the occasional black dots, they are the appearance of birds. As we've seen in this video, with a little care, patience and luck, a Raspberry Pi in camera can be used to shoot some quite interesting time-lapse movies, and I'm certainly very pleased with the results I've achieved. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.